immigration fraud. Is your administration going to possibly look into immigration fraud committed by Yelvahan Omar by possibly marrying her brother? Well, there's a lot of talk about the fact that she was married to a brother. I know nothing about it. I hear she was married to a brother. You're asking me a question about it. Uh, I don't know, but I'm sure that somebody would be looking at that. That was Trump updating you on the Ilhan Omar situation, the squad, the fucking squad, as they tell you. Um, so is somebody going to look into it? I don't know. The only people reporting on this, or talking about this, I don't call myself a reporter, were me and your favorite girl, Laura Loomer, who I know everybody loves. And that was back in my videos, November, December. And then subsequently, I had to watch Glenn Beck basically take my video word for word and just recite it in the exact same order, the exact same words. That's kind of annoying, but what can you do? I can't prove anything. Glenn Beck's got hundred million dollars to throw at me if you'd like. So a lot of people saying these things Trump are saying is racist. Uh, you can think what you want about that. I don't really care. I don't think it is. Um, but what's been shown by many, many people now is that Trump has seemingly thrown these people to the forefront on purpose. The squad, the squids, the squad. I, I like how many people did it take to come up with the squad, you know? You know, um, I think it's just a good way for us to be really cool, um, get in with the kids, we'll call ourselves the squad. So Trump has thrown them in the forefront on purpose. These four, why? There's evidence to back this up now. A new Axios poll has shown that in swing districts, it's um, white, non-college educated males. So a lot of swing voters in states and districts that the Democrats would have to win, would have to flip, excuse me, in order to beat Trump in 2020. Now, of these people that they polled, 74% of them recognized Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. However, only 22%, 22% of them had a favorable view of her. Likewise, Ilhan Omar, 53% of them recognized her by name. That's pretty popular. 73 out of four people recognize you, and you've only been in office for how long? How many people um, recognize that Swalwell guy, the guy who said, nuke the people who won't give up their guns. So Ilhan Omar, 53% of them recognize them, recognize her. Only 9% are favorable of her. That's racist. And it even says in the document, it's not a typo, the 9%. So everyone knows them, not in a good way, it seems. They're not popular for the right reasons. Things like making anti-America statements, being very socialist, verifiably false claims about the border, stuff like that. And I'm not one who just, you know, jumps on the wagon of like, this person hates America, and God bless America, and my, my pickup truck, and stuff like that. I'm not a person who jumps to these conclusions where it's like you make a comment that's criticizing the country, or even criticizing Israel, and all of a sudden, you know, you're the mo you hate your country, you hate Israel. I'm not that type of person. But, and of course, there had to be a but coming. If you do look at them, it's pretty obvious they don't like American society. I mean, uh, AOC wanted to completely uproot the, co the economy and the culture in favor of communism. Um, Ilhan Omar constantly doing things that are not in line with American views and values. It's a very Middle Eastern and Islamic viewpoint she has, especially against Israel. And so I don't think them being them automatically makes them like hateful towards America. I think, and I... I'm saying that I come from a place where I don't, I try not to think that based on what what they say, not on what other people say. But it, it's evident to me that they do seem to dislike American society and culture and they want to completely uproot it, which is why they're in a group of four that nobody really likes and why they're supporting communism. You got to make the uprising from the bottom up. So now they are the face of the Democrats, which is not good for the DMC, DNC because obviously they're very popular not for the right reasons. Now, I want to go on record, this wasn't just a video about me saying, you know, F you Glenn Beck. <laughs> I want to go on record that saying, I do think that the DNC is going to break up. I've been saying this for almost a year now, so I want to say it again publicly. I think that if they lose in 2020, they're going to break up into a couple different factions, basically the socialist faction and the crooked capitalists. You'll have your Pelosi's, you'll have your Elizabeth Warren and all them, and then you'll have the squad 
trying to bring in some neo-communist Islamic thing, which doesn't really make sense because once communists or Islam gets in power, then they're pretty differentiating uh, worldview points. They're pretty at odds. So that's interesting. But my question is, where will Bernie Sanders go? Will he go with the new socialists that more so agree with him and his fantasies? Or will he go with the people that have allowed a guy who claims that he promotes socialism to have like a bunch of houses and millions upon millions of dollars and benefit off of capitalism? So that's where I see it going. I see them breaking up after 2020. And I see a whole new uh, era being ushered in once Trump's second term is done, where we have like a few parties and then all of a sudden they're going to make a big push for eliminating the Electoral College and maybe things like California wanting to separate will happen. But as it stands right now, Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, the squad being pushed to the forefront on purpose by Trump, I don't think it's a racist thing. I think it's a tactic. I mean, he didn't, he didn't say anything about their skin color. He said for the girl from Somalia, who he thinks doesn't like America, that she can go back to her country, which is, I think, very verifiably um, easy to state that Somalia is not a great country. I'm sorry. At least not to the degree that United States is a good country. And them being pushed to the forefront is not good for Democrats. And it's going to be interesting to see how far down this rabbit hole the media goes to defend really the most unpopular politicians in the country. Like, it's like, like, it's like this, like, like, like.